28th of March, I got me a mobile ticket, mobile ticket, on my phone. I'm not writing down the number of this train. I'm in the toilet. A, a really weird thing is that this is the 335 Marlebone to Oxford train and I thought it would be quite quiet but the train is at that point where every set of seats is sort of taken by someone and then there's an empty seat next to it so in effect there's nowhere to sit there's no I can't sit in an area where I can then do this so I'm in the toilet so I'm gonna go and sit on the floor by the doors and fortunately I've, I've got a drink and a book to read so I, yeah great Hello, Oxford. We are getting the train that is the one a day for Finstock Flyer. It's the 1725. There's one in the morning, there's one in the evening. And I say we because I'm not doing it by myself. Obviously, I have a companion. My companion is someone I just got chatting to online on the internet, on the interwebs. A man called Ben wants to show me some old turntable. When Vicky and I were here on all the stations, uh, Cece. I nice to meet that. you! And you! Hi! Hi. He'll be very disappointed by the way that I came to Oxford and didn't tell her, I'm sorry. Uh, but Ben's going to show us uh, an old turntable which they had here at Oxford. Uh, and then we're going to get the 1725 train. I'm just on a wonder because there's a bike rack here. My mystery guest just called me to say that he's going to park his bike here. But the turntable is around here. And there, ah, and this, this, you, I was I was expecting you to come from that way. There's no you came from, you came from that way. Unfilmed. Everybody, this is Ben. Hello, nice to see you. Ben, why do you really like railways? Oh, well that's actually a very well framed <laughs> question, because I don't really like trains, but I really like railways. I really like that, networks. That's me. Well this is very so this was all railway estate and this is very oh. unusual because I moved back to Oxford having moved away. Oh yeah, canal and old bit of infrastructure. Do you want some facts? Yeah, some facts. Uh, okay, so this is uh, the Sheepwash Channel, which connects the uh, canal up there down to the Thames, which is just there on the other side of those houses. The old railway line that went from Oxford to Cambridge, which would be very useful if you could reopen that quickly, please. That was uh, built early and low. And because of that, if you look at the two bridges here, you can see the modern train bridge is high enough that you could just about get a canal boat underneath it. Sorry, and, and I kept on saying turntable. It's not a turntable, it's a, it's a swing bridge, isn't it? Yeah, sorry, yeah, this, sorry. Is, this is a swing bridge over the Sheepwash Channel. So every time I said turntable last minute, just replace that with the word <laughs> swing bridge. I got that wrong. And it's operated by a sort of hand crank thing that you can just see over there. It was obviously very um, keenly protected by the signal box because once you open it, any train coming down would just plop into the water. Uh, <laughs> and, and it was built by Brunel and it's 140 million years old. So which is it, Finstock or Coombe? <laughs> We didn't decide. Well, we don't have to decide. That's the joy of rail travel, <gasps> don't we? Let's buy a ticket to Finstock and then decide on the train. That. See? Smart man. Four minutes. Ben's getting the tea. It's on time. Last time we were here, it wasn't on time. It's a brand new, it's one of their new trains. This one of the new ones. 800 or something. This is the class 800. We, we could go here. We're on a very busy train. <coughs> There's a gentleman here that says we should go to. That says we should go to Finstock. There's a gentleman here that says that we should go to Coombe. Is it? He, he's discussing with his lady friend where they're going. What, have, I, have I managed to convince you to change where you're going? Yeah, basically. Whoa. And there's a lady over there that just, is just very interested in what we're doing anyway. <laughs> but, but, but still no vote on Finstock or Coombe. Finstock. a vote for Finstock. Okay. What was that about a rainbow? You have to have your back to the sun to see a rainbow. That's a great rainbow flash. No problem. <laughs> Anytime. Ben just wants to say he's put his foot on the platform at Coombe. Are you excited? <laughs> well, yeah, in a funny way. <laughs> Hello. 
One's getting off, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think that was it. Eight, eight people got off. That's not bad, is it? Bye, Coom. And Finn stop next. Oh, the guard didn't wave. I mean, just thinking about what's nice about trains. Just a single track disappearing off into the countryside and the train is there and it's a big swanky modern train and then it's completely gone and then you're just sort of there on your own in the middle of nowhere. And that is an, that is an amazing thing, like these rails go continually all the way from this middle of nowhere place all the way into Paddington Station and all of its bustle and everything else. I mean that is kind of, that is kind of amazing isn't it? No? I'm getting a classic bi bin. Compulsory bin bag shot. It's the bin in the breeze shot. I'm going to use the bin. Who empties the bin at Finstock? If there's only two trains a day, somebody from GWR must come by to, like, if I put this apple core in the bin. Well, we should come back every day to see how long it takes. <laughs> what is the half life of an apple in the bin at Finstock? And the sun is low. Bit better than I planned to do this last year, but the point is you can't, the thing about Finstock and Coombe is that you can't do this in the winter because it's, it's dark. You can only really do these stations in British summertime because of the daylight. So we are Finstock here. So we just arrived on that one at 5.47. And, oh wow, they really assume you're a commuter going into London, don't they? So you can leave in the morning at... God, this is a really horrible busy road. I feel like I'm learning why the railways failed. Everyone prefers their car. So at, uh, we're at Finstock. 7.53 in the morning. You can get to Oxford at 8.11. Or Paddington at 9.23. And when's the return? And then you'd leave Paddington at 4.22. Gosh, that is quite early to have to leave. So, imagine we've just arrived at the station. Right. What are your first impressions, Ben? Well, I'm hearing easy listening music from the 50s. <laughs> Here comes Dr. Gilbert on his commute to London. Oh, there's, a, there's, a, there's an onward travel information hunt. I always, <laughs> I always love these, because there's almost nothing on them. <laughs> there are no options. There's nothing. Uh, no, there was a bus oh, stop. Well, oh, yeah, it's one bus. They're telling you about all the different bus routes, but they're all the X9. <laughs> Come and explore the wonders of Finderstock platform. We need, we need to do station facilities next. Wait, is the apple core still there? <laughs> this is your big moment. Are you ready? This is, this is my big moment. This is, this is where you win the BAFTA. Okay. <laughs> Take okay. us through Finstock's facilities. Hey, that, that alliterates. We should have that. Finstock's facilities. So the facilities at Finstock station include... Well, there's a help point. So I suppose you can have a bit of chat. There is no ticket machine so that's a good excuse because you don't have a return there is a shelter and, and a bit and a bench and a, and and a, a bin bench and a bin so i'm gonna cut you've missed the obvious thing how did you arrive at oxford station earlier how did i arrive at yeah, oxford station oh on a bicycle that, that's your clue as to where we're going next oh right okay yes he's seen it a uh, bike rack an empty <laughs> bike rack and actually in somewhere as remote as this if i was minded to steal a bike there's just four bolts you can just I mean, nobody would notice if you just unscrewed that and lifted the whole... Now I have to get a cutaway of, of the bolts <laughs> and, put, and put up a disclaimer saying please do not <laughs> steal, steal the bike rack at oh, Finstock. That? Oh, so that's a strange round bolt. So I've just walked it at a sedate pace and it takes 26 seconds. Yeah. Ben, credit him, he went, he went, well, I, do you want me to be Vicky and measure it in Vicky's feet? I didn't think he'd be up for the feet thing. But ble God bless him, he's genuinely walking toe to heel the length. We're going to need some kind of conversion table, some sort of Ben to Vicky conversion table. That's a mass problem and a half. How's it going? Go on, uh, out loud please for the final few. Oh, right. look at that, look, your toe really did. Nine. How many? 129 
we're, we're going we're gonna to need some kind of conversion yeah, we're from, from Vicky feet to Ben feet. How, I, don't I don't know how. I'll you, have to send you home with my shoes. Are you good with sums? Can you do numbers? Well, yeah, but we don't have any Vicky feet. I mean, unless you brought them with you, which would be sinister and wrong. I could ring her up at yeah. home, ask her to measure her shoe, but then how do we measure your shoe? I, we can do that offline. That way, about two inches. Both got our legs crossed. Yeah, but then our feet were close. Oh, yeah, no, that was so weird. Near it. Okay. Welcome to Questions with Dr. Goldacre. Oh, right, okay, is that what we're doing? But yeah, so uh, we have to do the simple station facts. Right. Basically, we just. What can you remember from the Wikipedia article that we just read about five minutes ago? Oh, <laughs> go. Oh, wow, okay. I, remember, <laughs> I, I had one fact to remember, which is that there are. Uh, 1,836 journeys from here. Yes, that is the new OOR stats, which if you divide by 365 to give an approximate daily figure is... Uh, well, in my head, that's 5.0301. And that's, yes. that's less than we saw and we today. Saw, we saw seven get off. So. Oh, but actually accounting for weekend, that's exactly what you'd expect. Oh, that's true. I don't think... Oh, we didn't... Oh, we didn't check that on the timetable, time, time but I don't think there's any Saturday or Sunday service here at Finstock yeah. or, or Coombe. It used to be called Finsby Holt. Finsby Holt? Finstock Finstock Holt. Holt. Sorry, when it first opened. It used to have two platforms. You astutely, over there, pointed out the, the sloping slopiness. Well, yeah, you can see a sort of yeah. uh, an unnaturally geometric slope. And the track, the line was singled, not in the 60s because of beaching. They, it held out until about 71, I think. And certainly the one train a day in each direction service came in in the, in the late 19. 90s and it's nowhere near the village of Finstock. Yeah, that is that striking the thing about most of these unused stations, isn't it? They made no sense at the time either. The um, uh, what was I going to say? Nothing of any interest or value. <laughs> Bit like um, your books. <laughs> Sorry. I've been on this line once uh -huh. because I fell asleep on the way from London to Oxford. It is true. Yeah, yeah, and then woke up in Charlbury, and I have experienced the misery of the of the single track line because yeah. on the way back. Something was late, or something was early. And that's and the this problem. Train just had to wait. If a train going this way on the single, single track line is late, it can't it, just it, get it, off it, and wait it, for the other one to go past. It also takes yeah. trains coming in the other direction. I believe. Well, it makes the diagramming. Yeah. Extremely. Uh, I believe brittle. Network Rail would love to redouble this track in some places, or at least maybe mm. adding a, some extra more, passing loops, more well, passing, passing loops. Passing loops pretty easy, aren't they? But they have to be very long passing loops if you want to hurtle down them at 100 miles an hour. That is true. That's the problem. Well, you'd need the Hornby Express points to do that, not just the normal points. Have you still got your Hornby train set from when you were nipper? Yeah, no, I totally have. Yeah, I've been playing with it recently. No, you haven't. How the world has changed. Crossed your legs in the other way, so I'm joining you. Oh, no, now it's... It's oh, it's all... Cool. No, no. Um, last thing. Possible taste. You, that's Kenny Everett, isn't it? I love it. I love this man. You mentioned growing up. What is your earliest childhood memory? And, you know, when you were like five... Did your mum sort of take you out on the train to London? Was it like a big deal? I sent you a picture you did. earlier on you that did. I took with my camera of a picture that's on my wall, which was a picture that made me so happy I could almost cry with joy. When I was a kid, I was sure I could remember that when we'd go to the station, when I was sort of four or something, you know, in the late to, 70s, to Oxford, to Oxford Station, okay. I was absolutely certain that the car park out the front had train tracks going through it, and sometimes at different points in my childhood recollections it had kind of abandoned open trucks and stuff in the forecourt but um but you know how so the railway community is full of detailed people yes right? yes or rather details of people yes uh, and there's a whole scene of people selling photographs of bits of train stuff on ebay right and i had set up an alert for <laughs> oxford railway and oxford station and i got a picture which is the one that i sent you of the forecourt of Oxford Station in 1981. We're going to, in, I think we're going to insert that picture ready as an overlay now. Ooh. But when I saw that picture, it was mind blowing because I was so obsessed with those tracks and with being able to go and explore them after parking the car. Yeah. And then, and then there was no record of them, and nobody else but me seemed to remember them. And it was that hazy childhood, like four-year-old memory thing. Well, and there it is. If we've done facilities, we've done numbers. Is there anything else you want to check out here at Finstock? Well, do you know, actually, it's it's interesting having a kind of meditative moment next to some really banal um, 
rather lacking station facilities. A bit like meditating in general. It's an opportunity to focus on the small things, isn't it? And would, would you like a moment of just like calmness? What's happened <laughs> is a train should have come through by now, heading like a, a non stopper. But I've checked open train times, real time trains, and it seems to have stalled up the line. And we think that the trains might be broken. And our plan was to get a taxi to Childbury, where they're hourly, and go home that way. But you rang a number, they said they could do something. Could, could you ring them and organise us a taxi, please? This is must see TV. <laughs> Can we get a taxi from Finstock Station to Oxford Parkway, please? That'd be great. All right, cool. You know where Finstock Station is? All right, uh, just two of us. Hey, thank you, cheers. Ben, it's the final parting shot. We need to put the camera down. We need to do the old put the camera down. And Have we you seem to walk away. And we need a shot, we need a walking into the sunset. And you've yeah. got some like license free Ennio Morricone type music. Probably. All right. <laughs> now you've said that, I've got to do that. <laughs> Is that right? Hang on, this is amazing. So yeah. I can say like, yeah, and, and, then, <laughs> and then when we get in the taxi, it all goes a bit um, sort of uh, mid cup career Metallica. Cup. Cup. <laughs> Take us to Oxford. That's it. This is the end of our magical fin stop. Now we moment. have to we do a wait a cheesy wave goodbye. It's been fun. Thanks very much. How was it? How was your least used experience? Yeah, I think we should have gone to Coombe. <laughs> Coombe is don't like, don't because this is in a gully, whereas Coombe is sort of it's just on some bad landscape, so it's more graphically pointless somehow. Ben, ben. <laughs> there could be promise just over any of these. <laughs> Just over any of these banks, there could be price, whereas at Coombe, you know there's nothing. Goodbye <laughs> to the taxi. <laughs> See an old school in City 125. Are they going to take those away? Are they going to? They're taking our City 125 from my cold, dead hands. <laughs>